There's a particular aspect of various games I really enjoy, something a lot of my favourites have in common. If you guess swords and anime haircuts, yes, but that's not what I'm talking about in this video. I mentioned in my Final Fantasy IX video that I'm a huge fan of the whole super-powered alter ego thing, and I wanted to elaborate on that a bit. I'm not certain if there's a specific term used for this, so I'll just be referring to this phenomenon I love so much as the super form. Now, if you've played your share of video games, or watched anime pretty much ever, chances are you already know what a super form is. In video games specifically, it represents some sort of transformation that likely boosts the damage a player can put out, along with other variables like increased speed, health regeneration, and even new abilities unique to that super form. A brilliant example of this is the Devil May Cry series, which I honestly plan on making more videos on. A lot of videos. Like a million videos, just call me Thief of Red Orbs. I kind of see Devil May Cry as the king of this particular trope for a number of reasons. Too many to properly get into here. But the series served as my introduction to this idea, and frankly, I've been on board ever since. The super form Devil May Cry utilises, Devil Trigger, excels at giving the player full control over what genuinely feels like a devastatingly effective power. This works so well because of how naturally challenging the games themselves tend to be. If a game like Dynasty Warriors gave you Devil Trigger, you'd barely recognise any difference. But because Devil May Cry's enemies are often relatively deadly, the shift of power Devil Trigger brings is made all the more obvious when the tables suddenly turn. It probably starts out as your panic button. Things need to die fast because you're in danger. But over time, this develops into the ability being utilised standardly as you become braver, until you eventually find yourself weaving in and out of it to run circles around any given boss. Super forms come in a lot of different flavours and go by a lot of different names. Devil Trigger, Transform, Ripper Mode, there's a lot of them out there, but they all have one thing in common. The super form makes you feel awesome. But where does this catharsis come from? Surely it comes from beating seven shades of shit out of everything around you, right? Well, yes, but actually no. Does it come from the amazingly badass designs some of these forms have? Each super form can vary drastically in appearance. Some are more subtle with the classic glowing red eyes, maybe a new hair colour thrown in for good measure. And others have you looking like Demon Jesus! Well, we're getting warmer, but no cigar. There's a lot more to this than being the biggest threat in the room and looking cool in the process. Something that elevates it beyond the simple video game mechanic. And that something is the narrative weight surrounding such a devastating ability. Usually, a super form is unlocked by a character who is facing severe hardship, something that's likely the toughest challenge they've been met with so far. They can take many forms, whether it be a genuine mental breakdown, something the matter, Raiden? <laughs> I've nearly saved enough to bring Baba to the stage. Finish him off! Whatever it takes to be free of this torture. Stop it! Or your own sword delivered straight through your chest. It happens. The desperate nature of the situation before the character in question is what pushes them above and beyond. This is something that goes back as far as Super Saiyans, and possibly even further than that. Remember that thing that the story was insisting this character couldn't do? Maybe other characters told them as much. I can still fight! No! You're just a witch! Maybe our hero has spent their time pursuing a goal that always seems out of reach. And now it looks like they've reached the end of the road. And then, oops, what do you mean this guy's the protagonist? And this is where the catharsis comes in, making the impossible possible. It's the physical manifestation of an inherent drive to succeed, and rarely is a super form directly related to a character's raw strength or capability. Usually it's tempered by their willpower, their inner strength, or a burst of emotion. Sometimes it has less to do with what they are, and more to do with who they are. This is sometimes coupled with a sort of coming-of-age story, involving the character in question getting to grips with this new power, and coming to terms with what they've become while doing so. The reason this is such an effective storytelling tool in video games especially is because the player can actually feel the difference in power and further empathise with the character they're playing as. 
Devil May Cry 3 is focused around Dante's growth both as a person and as a fighter. He wants to surpass his brother, and chances are, the player does too. There's a reason Virgil's one of the most effective rivals in history. With his Devil Trigger unlocked, Dante now stands a chance of achieving his goal, one he fights even harder for once he finds a greater reason to succeed. This super form is practically the catalyst of his character development because of how it levels the playing field and allows him to grow. But while the super form is a tool to deal with the conflict these characters are met with, they often introduce entirely new conflicts within the characters themselves. They can present questions and uncertainty on the morality involved or shed light on a darker side. <laughs> this is my normal. My nature. You're gazing into an abyss, and sometimes it gazes back. When you get deep enough into this kind of superhuman power, can you truly be defined as human anymore? If I'm a demon, and not a human anymore, is this what you want? Nero, you're you, and it's you I want to be with. I don't know anyone who is as human as you are. Some games have taken to sort of reinventing how a super form can function, and that's an idea I can seriously get behind. A great example of this is Astral Chain, wherein your super form doesn't directly make the player's character stronger. Uh, actually it might, I don't know. I only started playing recently but I'm kind of hooked and I'm not saying that's a large part of why I haven't made a video in a while, but... Astral Chain's super form is tied, quite literally, to your legion, a powerful otherworldly being you control. This is probably where I'd put a JoJo's reference but um, I've never actually watched it so I guess all I can really say is... I think there's a lot of different interesting ways to go about putting a unique spin on superforms, though the most prominent I see involves summoning. In Astral Chain, your legion can be used in a variety of ways once you summon them and you can switch between several different legions on the fly, which makes your character a distinctly versatile fighter. Already this makes them rather different to characters like Dante for instance, but it all comes from the same core idea. Other games go for a similar yet different approach built around the theme of summoning as a part of a character's superform. Sometimes you summon your personal interpretation of freedom and justice. And sometimes you summon your anime girl sidekick to sing for you and help you feel better about yourself for sucking pretty bad. The Gumball series is kinda weird, even Devil May Cry 5 introduces V, a character whose devil trigger is built around summoning this heckin' chonka. The creativity that goes into reimagining the concept is astounding, and I seriously hope to see more of this kind of stuff in the future. These different takes have a lot of promise, and they deserve to be explored. Ultimately, it's important to remember that the appeal of a super form doesn't come from power levels or being unstoppable. It comes from the gratification of someone not only achieving their full potential, but choosing to use that potential for the greater good. We've all faced hardship before, something we might not be able to overcome. Most of us want to do the right thing, but we don't always have the power to. Super forms in video games fulfill this inherent wish and convey it in two senses at once, through narrative and gameplay combined. It's not to do with being edgy and cool, it's to do with the liberation that power can bring. It's about being granted the ability to become more than you were. The chance to become... a hero. It is pretty fun to punch the Pope in the face though. Thanks for watching guys, seriously. Apologies to anyone waiting on the next part of my Magic of Final Fantasy series. I know there's probably someone out there. I am working on that, I think I just needed to mix up my content a bit and get some variety in there. I still have every intention of completing that series, so no worries. I will be branching off like this every now and then to keep things fresh, so keep an eye out for more new stuff in the future. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter for updates. And if you want to support my content, why not take a look at my Patreon? Links to both are in the description below. Have a great day, I'll catch you next time.